Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to look at student growth. And how we're going to look at that is by creating a line plot graph that involves fractions. We are in our home links, Unit 5, Lesson 9. Let's take a look at the story problem at the top. It says, Mrs. Welch surveyed her students about how much they have grown over the past year. This is the data she gathered. So as you can see, at the top left-hand corner, we have a chart, and there are a number of measurements. Okay? Now, over to the right, we have a space to create a line plot graph. So, first of all, we need to give this a title. Okay? What should we call this? Well, she measured growth over the past year, so we could say something like this. Inches grown over one year. Okay? Now, how are we going to measure that? Well, we have to create a line, a number line down at the bottom. Okay? And that number line is going to measure growth. Right? And we need to give a unit inches. Now some people grow in full inches and some people grow in half inches and some people grow in a combination of full and half inches. Okay, So what we need to do is we need to figure out what is the range of growth. What is the smallest increment uh, that someone grew and what is the largest? Well as I survey this table I see that the smallest amount is one half. Okay, it said uh, measure to the nearest half inch, and half inch is the smallest increment grown. Okay, now let's find the largest amount. Well, those uh, mixed numbers are a good place to start, and the largest whole number that I see is three and a half inches. Okay, so when I create my number line, right, I'm going to create a number line that starts out at half an inch because that's my smallest amount. And my largest amount is going to be three and a half inches. So I'm just going to fill in the blanks in between. So one, one and a half, two, two and one half, and, well, not two and a third, two and a half. There we go. And then three. Okay? So now what I have to do is I have to organize this data. So the easiest way to do that is for me to go through each box, read it, one and a half inches, find it on the number line, here we are, put an X in that space, and then cross it out. So with each number, two, I'm going to put an X right where it is along the number line. Okay. Now, watching me make a bunch of X's is going to be tedious, so I'm going to use some uh, video daring do and some uh, editing to speed up the process. So, three, two, one, boom! There you go, a completed line plot graph. Okay, as you can see, I uh, started out my X's a little bit too big, and we uh, got a little cramped towards the top here, but that's okay. So as you can see, what I did is I, uh, for each X I marked on my line plot graph, I crossed it out in my table so I could keep track, okay? So now what I have to do is answer some questions about this data so I can use the graph to help me uh, understand what's going on here. So for example, question two asks me, what is the greatest number of inches a student grew in a year? Well, that would be about three and a half. Well, we knew that when we were creating our, our uh, number line because three and a half is the biggest amount that anyone grew. Okay, so I would write that amount down here. Okay, so I would write three and one half inches. What was the least? Well, again, that's the right-hand side, or I'm sorry, the left-hand side of my number line, okay, which is a half, okay, so the smallest amount anyone grew was a half. Half is better than none, I guess, 
okay? And that's what you do with a line plot graph. You use the data that's been organized to make decisions about that data. So questions number three, you can use the information from this line plot graph to uh, solve, the, solve the questions, okay? All right, now let's skip down to the practice problems right here. It says circle the three equivalent fractions in each group. So you have, looks like five fractions, four or five, in each group. you got to figure out which are equivalent or what are the same amounts, okay? Let's just start with number four, shall we? So we have a fourth, three-sixths, one-eighth, two-eighths, and three-twelfths, okay? Well, I know for sure that if I have the same numerator, I cannot have the same denominator uh, and those fractions be equivalent. So one of these two fractions won't work. And since I have one-eighth and two-eighths side by side, I know that neither one of these can be in the same group. Okay. Same with three-sixths and three-twelfths. We can't have two fractions with the same numerator and different denominators be equal to the same thing. Okay, so we've got to eliminate a couple fractions here. Well, um, I know that two eighths is the same as saying one fourth because if I say had a box that was cut up into say four parts, okay, and one of them was shaded in like so, and then I cut those parts in half again, right, uh, like so. I would now have eight parts instead of four parts. Two of those eight parts are now shaded in, okay? So now I have two eighths is equal to one fourth. So if I eliminate uh, one eighth, I'll cross that out so I don't have to look at it. Okay, now I just gotta figure out what would come next. Well. 3 6 I know is equivalent to 1 half because again if I create a box and cut it up into 6 parts and shade it in 3 of those parts it looks the same as 1 half half of that box is shaded in so I know that 3 6 can't be equivalent either so what does that leave me? that leaves me 1 fourth, 2 8 and 3 6 if I were to rewrite those fractions down here, 1 fourth, 2 eighths, 3 twelfths, you see that pattern forming? 1, 2, 3. At the top, I'm skip counting by 1s. At the bottom, I'm skip counting by 4s. 4, 8, 12. If I kept going, my next one would be 16, 4 sixteenths, and so on. So the 3 fractions I'm interested in here are 1 fourth, 2 eighths, and 3 twelfths. Hey boys and girls, if uh, this is confusing, or, or you're having trouble solving these problems, or wrapping your head around all this, please take the time to reach out to your math teacher, whether you are live in the classroom or working from home, your math teacher will be happy to help you with any questions you may have. You just have to ask. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, until we uh, speak again, friends, uh, good luck with this assignment and have a good day. Thanks.